Hey guys. So patient 40 year old male presents to you with redness all over and there is itching as well. The patient has hoarseness of voice and says there is some difficulty during breathing. Right? So how will you manage this patient? Think about it. Till that time, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dr. Chirag Madan, working as an intensivist, ICU consultant and in charge at Apollo Hospital, New Delhi. So without wasting much time, let's begin. So the scenario we just discussed is of anaphylaxis. So the anaphylaxis is acute, potentially fatal, maybe life-threatening and involving multi-systems which occurs because of release of chemical mediators from mast cells and basophils, right? And uh, if you talk about the clinical features, the patient has multi-system, as I said, multi-system involvement. Mainly, out of all the system, main involvement is of cutaneous. So, 70 to 80% percent patient presents with cutaneous manifestation. And if we talk about cutaneous, the main symptoms will be patient having a flushing as we have in this case, patient having urticarial rash throughout the body and there will be pruritus or itching. Right? So these are the main symptoms but there are 20% of the patient who do not have cutaneous manifestation. Now the other systems which are involved could be respiratory, patient might be having shortness of breath or patient present with hoarseness or patient might be having strider. So these are the life threatening thing right. And we will discuss what uh, management we have to go if patient present with these kind of symptoms. Then the other system involvement could be GI. Patient might present with diarrhea or vomiting. And if you talk about the CVS or the heart, then patient can have either tachycardia, can present with tachycardia or bradycardia or patient having low BP that is hypotension. So that means the patient is going into cardiovascular collapse. This is again life threatening. Right? And the patient can also present with CNS symptoms, lightheadedness, LOC and dizziness and the other symptom could be runny nose and all those non-specific symptoms. Right? So the main systems which are involved first is cutaneous, then second is respiratory, third there could be GI symptoms and fourth is cardiovascular. Right? Uh, talking about the, the signs, patient might be having tachycardia, tachypnea, the patient might be having that anxious look and they can, you can have wheezing. You can hear the wheeze, right? So these are the signs which the patient presents with. Now, coming on to the next part, that is the diagnosis. So uh, if you talk about anaphylaxis, diagnosis is clinical. For clinical, I mean to say first, you need to have a good clinical history, right? The patient might be having some food allergy or uh, you take a history in past half an hour or 45 minutes what food the patient has taken or any kind of drug allergy patient might be having allergy to the sulfur drugs or NSAIDs most commonly or you can have allergy from any cephalosporins right then there can be history of insect bite or sting bite so you need to evaluate and fi find out the allergen as well that is the most important thing right then First is clinical history for the diagnosis. Second is you need to see the clinical signs and symptoms, right? Uh, if you talk about the blood test, the test we normally, uh, which is written, we, ha we don't normally send in uh, anaphylaxis because this is very acute, is serum tryptase level. So that might help in confirming your diagnosis. And the other test, if you have time, I mean, I mean the patient is not deteriorating, you can send IgE levels or you can go for skin allergy test, right? But normally, as I said, this is the diagnosis is made clinically. Now, the last part, important part is the management. How do you manage these kind of patients? So first and foremost, whenever you have find these kind of patients in your emergency ward or your ICU or let's say in your neighborhood, you have to follow A, B, C, D, E. First, you need to see the airway of the patient, right? whether it is patent or not. And if the patient has this hoarseness, swelling, uh, swelling all over the oral mucosa or the tongue, or the patient having wheezing, strider, so that goes in favor that patient is deteriorating. 
and you need to treat as soon as possible and you need to have all your airway equipments ready with all airway equipments ready i mean to say first of all your endotracheal tube because if this swelling the glottic swelling is increasing then you might need to intubate the patient and put the patient on a ventilator right for, for uh, maintaining the patency of the airway and in extreme cases let's say there is a severe glottic edema you're not able to intubate a patient you need to go for cricothyrotomy right but that is in extreme and very rare cases so emergency tracheostomy can be done or cricothyrotomy can be done right but you need to be prepared for that second you need to check the breathing after a there is breathing you need to check the the, the respiratory pattern and the rate third you need to see the circulation c stands for circulation the pulse how, how the pulse is the volume of the pulse and the blood pressure of the patient right then d stands for disability the neurological disability you need to see whether a patient is in altered mentation or deteriorating in sense of conscious level right and last e is full exposure of the patient because you need to uh, uh, you need to decontaminate the patient also if there is some allergen attached or there is a sting bite so last is full exposure of the patient okay now this is the approach how you approach the patient simultaneously while doing all those things that you have to go for the drug of choice the drug of choice for anaphylaxis is adrenaline or you can say epinephrine right you don't have to uh, i mean first follow a then b then c these things has to be done simultaneously you don't get so much of time while managing anaphylaxis okay now the point is everybody knows we have to give adrenaline now the point is uh, which route and the other is how much the dose okay talking about the route so the preferred route is im intramuscular right uh, the dose if you talk about im is 0.3 2.5 ml of one ampule so first of all one ampule is 1 mg with a dilution of 1 is 2000 that's it and and forget about 1 is 2000 this is very confusing right so just remember one ampule break it take out 0.3 to 0.5 ml and give intramuscularly preferred not the deltoid preferred is anterolateral aspect or the outer aspect of the thigh that is more preferred now the other route is iv but it has to be given by a highly skilled specialist because it can, it has uh, the complication i mean the arrhythmias associated with it so first of all you have to dilute it then you have to give in cases of cardiovascular collapse let's say the bp is falling 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 and uh, patient is almost uh, pulseless so in those kind of a severe cardiovascular collapse you directly go for uh, iv adr okay so after giving this adr you need to start iv fluids also because this anaphylaxis is sort of distributive shock so iv fluid is given and mainly preferred is crystallites either ns or rl that is ringolactate you need to give around 20 ml per kg or uh, let's say 1 to 2 liters to the patient right so as to maintain the blood pressure of the patient also you need to have the positioning of the patient make the patient lie down supine supine with leg raised right so as to have that auto filling now apart from that if the patient has wheezing then you can go for a nebulization of salvitamol right uh after these so so four, four things which i mentioned is first is first and foremost is you have to give adr adrenaline second iv fluids to the patient third make the patient supine with leg raised and fourth is salvitamol nebulization right so these are the main treatment then comes the adjuncts the adjunctive treatment which has uh h1 blockers or h2 blockers and also the steroids the glucocorticoids so normally what we feel is we need to give evil and steroid directly but there are, are no such role if you talk about histamine blockers they are mainly given for the arterial rash and for the pruritus they don't 
uh, treat the wheezing, the breathing discomfort, never ever, right? And uh, glucocorticoids are also given. And uh, let's say you have given repeated uh, IM adrenaline every five minutes. You can repeat uh, IM adrenaline every five minutes. If still there is no response, then you can go ahead with IV ADR infusion, right? And that is started at 0.1 mics per kg per minute. Let's not go into that much of detail. Okay, uh, and let's say if the patient uh, is on beta blocker and patient is not responding to your adrenaline, then you can go for glucagon, one to five milligram, right? Uh, so this is all about the anaphylaxis. So I hope I have explained this anaphylaxis in a simplified manner and you like it. And if at all you like, please hit the thumbs up button and comment in the comment section about the feedback and uh, about the next video which you want from my side. Till then, bye-bye, take care and keep watching Intellect Medigos.